let's briefly, if we may go to your dynasty. My what? Your dynasty. Your, well, oh, your yes, mother, yes. I see. your daughter, your grandfather. How many generations of Moors have been in the trade, so to speak? Oh, well, very few. Um, my grandfather was an economist, but he was a man of great interest uh, in the arts as well. And one time in Glasgow as a young man, he edited both the technical review and the arts review. <laughs> and he was a great friend of many artists and of theater people, of um, uh, Bernard Shaw. So the first... Shaw, in fact, uh, parodies <coughs> him in the Reverend James Maver Morrell in Canada. That's my grandfather, James Maver. That's where that comes from. And uh, uh, so he was, he was extremely interested in it, but uh, then his, his nephew, my mother's cousin, uh, O.H. Maver, uh, was a doctor, a Glasgow surgeon, who turned playwright under the name of James Bridie. And uh, for, for, for 20 years was one of the best known playwrights in uh, London. He had a play running most of the time. Uh, perhaps the best known of them now because of the movie ad adaptation of Storm in a Teacup which had, uh, at the beginning of their careers, you know, people like Rex uh, Harrison and, and uh, 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 Robert Morley and uh, um, all, all kinds of people who went on to become very big stars. Mm -hmm. um, he, it was not a he was not a success in New York because his plays were either British or Scottish, and they wanted to do his Scottish plays several times, but wanted him to rewrite it in Irish for the New York public. And he refused. He said, let the Irish write their own bloody plays. <laughs> and um, uh, he had one play open with Edith Evans on Broadway, Daphne Laureola, which he'd written for her and which was a huge success in London. Uh, now, and, your daughter, Teddy, is in the profession. Yeah. Do you wish your grandchildren and great-grandchildren to enter the theater? Well, uh, I tried to, you know, I tried to get out of their lives. I didn't care much they were. Te for Teddy, it was the only thing in life that really mattered at a certain point when she was 17, 18. And so we did our best to, to get her into it, send her to RADA. And uh, uh, it has meant a great deal to her ever since. And my second daughter, Charlotte, was in the backstage part of it. She's an artist, and she went to York in visual arts, and then she did props and costumes and, until uh, arthritis uh, at a very young age made it very difficult for her to do all that kind of thing. Uh, so she was in it and sort of remained in it. Uh, the, the number, number th three daughter, uh, Marilee is a singer, but she was a biologist also, which is the other, there's a lot of doctors in the family. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, and uh, eventually became a, an Anglican minister. She's a great preacher. <laughs> and sings. <laughs> uh, and then my youngest one, Charlotte, went holus bolus into it. She went to York to the theater department there too. Um, but... Uh, she started as a singer and dancer, and she has continued as the, right. as a triple threat. And she loves it. And she, the remarkable thing is that how she's been able to carve a career entirely in Canada, because there is a well-known Charlotte Moore on Broadway, a performer and director, right. now a director, an older woman. Uh, so she can't go down there with that name. But she's, she's had an extraordinary career in, uh, in Canada. Now, you've just seen your first grand, great-grandchild. Yes. Do you wish that grandchild to enter the trade, so to speak? Well, I don't, I don't know what you mean by the trade. Again, <laughs> you see, the, there's that tricky word. Are we talking about an industry? Are we talking about an art? Well, I, I hope that she will, will find uh, some art 
that will that will release and integrate her as a person, and, uh, and though she's she's very tiny, there are sparks of that personality there already.